Welcome to the Global Podcast. We're here to talk about the recently launched Global Research Report on the MENA construction sector. Within this report, we're going to look at five different companies and the recently initiated coverage within the Saudi sector as well. Within these markets, uh, we've got two companies based in Dubai, uh, Drake & Skull as well as Araptec. Uh, one based in Egypt, which is Oroscom Construction, and two based in Saudi Arabia, which is Marjil and Al Khudari. Uh, now, we're here to welcome as well Hitish, Hitish Kumar, who's a senior financial analyst within our research team. Uh, Hitish, I'd like to ask you today to discuss a little bit generally how the construction um, uh, market within the MENA region is correlated to the real estate market. And obviously, we've seen a significant drop within the activity in the real estate market. So how has that affected the construction market within the MENA region? The construction sector is to some extent correlated with the real estate market, but we cannot say that it is completely correlated in the sense that uh, the construction contractors get their projects from different developers such as industrial companies, such as mechanical, electrical companies, as well as the companies which are into mixed use projects, as well as the companies which are into infrastructure also. So we cannot say completely that they are correlated with the real estate segment, but to some extent they are. So. Now that you did say there is somewhat a slight correlation, obviously the construction sector has really been affected within this downturn. Uh, can you maybe elaborate a little bit about some of the initiatives that they have taken in order to cope with these uh, maybe uh, hurdles for growth moving forward? The sector has taken various initiatives. But on the sectoral front, the contractors have gone into various initiatives such as bullet payments, guaranteed payments, and the classification of developers into categories. By bullet payments, we mean that they will be getting a first-hand payment ranging between 15 to 25 percent, first hand before the start of the project. By guaranteed payments, they mean that after completion of first phase, second phase, and third phase, and so on, they would get a guaranteed payment of pipelines. And thirdly, they have classified the developers into categories A, B, or C based on their performance in the market and based on their uh, overall know-how and, know and the feel in the market. On an individual basis, the companies have gone into vertical as well as horizontal integrations. They have acquired companies, they have gone into new businesses, they have done various joint ventures. For example, if we say about Oroscom, Oroscom is a construction contracting company. It is the leading co contracting company in the Middle East. But it has supported its income from various sources. Earlier it was cement when it divested its cement business in 2008. Now it's fertilizer segment. And secondly, if we talk about other diversification measures, it can be geographical diversification. Like many of the companies have previously more exposure to Dubai, but since the Dubai has gone down and the activity has stalled to a bit, so the construction companies have diversified from Dubai to different MENA countries. Hatish, let's take a look at now a very specific market segment within the construction uh, sector, and that's the projects and contracts sector. Can you please elaborate a little bit more about the performance of this market segment, and has it really evolved since the financial crisis? Yeah, the project market have picked up over, ever since the financial crisis. The project market at the end of 2008, with the active number of projects were at, at around 1.5 trillion, now they have moved up to 1.6 trillion. Within this project market, Saudi Arabia is the most active market with 37% of the market share, followed by Qatar at around 25%, and then Kuwait and other countries at around 14% each. And now if you see at the contract market also, on an individual basis, uh, on, an, on a monthly basis, the contracts being assigned in 2011 are around 9 to 10 billion, as compared to 7 to 8 billion in 2009. Now tell us, within the MENA region, what country do you favor the most and on what basis, really? Yeah, Within MENA countries, we like Saudi Arabia and Qatar the most, followed by Kuwait and Oman. Uh, the reason for liking Saudi Arabia is that the country is going ahead with a lot of projects. Uh, ever since the political upheaval started in Saudi Arabia, the country has taken various measures. The measures, the measures include building of houses, increasing the overall salaries of the government employees and many more. Uh, now if we look alone at the Saudi housing market also, they are, they are building around 5 lakh, housing, uh, 5 lakh houses in the near term, which is in the range of 4 to 5 years. 
Now building these 4 lakh or 5 lakh houses, they need at, at least around 8 to 10 big developers as big as Saudi Bin Laden group to make these things, to complete these things. Now there are not many developers which are as big as Saudi uh, Bin Laden group. So they need at least like either the international or the regional companies to come into Saudi market to make this project and complete this project completely. After that we like Qatar. The reason for liking Qatar is that the historic event which was recently announced a uh, few months back regarding the hosting of 2012, 2022 World Cup. Now this World Cup is actively handling them because in the sense that they will be making around so many new hotels, they will be increasing the supply of the rooms, they will be making 12 to 15 stadiums and this will require a lot of activity on the infrastructure as well as the real estate front. So this is why we like Saudi Arabia and Qatar the most within the construction sector. Let's talk a little bit about the competitive environment. So within, apart from really the local players, obviously there has been a lot of activity from international players as well. So can you elaborate a little bit about how that competitive landscape has changed and to what extent the competition has posed for local players? The competition has been a major issue within the regional markets. Now if you see that many Asian and European players have come into this market, if we say a few names, then Larson and Tobro of India, Chinese construction companies, South Korean companies have really ventured into these markets, capturing the biggest share. Now, most of the railway projects and the big infrastructure projects are being announced to South Asian and Chinese uh, contractors. Now, within this uh, market, we believe that uh, the international, since ever since the international players have come in, the competition has increased so much that the gross margins of these companies have gone down significantly. Earlier, they were way above 20%, now they have fallen back to 16 to 17%. Now Hitesh, uh, tell us a little bit about Global's recommendation regarding what's so-called as diversified contractors. Elaborate a little bit maybe on what you mean by diversified contractors and really to what extent, what does the di diversification aspect really relate to? By diversified contractors, we mean that the companies are diversified into various senses, like in the sense that they have either gone into new businesses, they have gone into new joint ventures, and many more things. Now, if we talk on an individual basis, the Oriscom construction has diversified in the sense that it has gone into an altogether new segment, which is fertilizer. The segment has grown as big as that it contributes around 50% to the net income of the company now. By 2012, the fertilizer segment will be the third largest nitrogen producer in the world. Now, if we talk about Drake and Skull, the company has diversified that earlier it was only a UAE based contractor. Now, it has diversified to all the MENA countries and the share of Dubai has fallen down to less than 20%. The biggest market for Drake and Skull is Saudi Arabia, which contributes around 33% to the backlog of the company. Now, if we talk about Al Khudri, it has diversified in only in the infrastructure segment. It has started from constructing the buildings to going down as low as cleaning of the sewage plants, cleaning of the roads and all those. So it has gone into deep levels of infrastructure segment alone also. Hitesh, thank you very much for this elaborate overview. Just to wrap up with a few words, uh, global research continues to believe that regardless of the collapse in regional real estate markets, uh, the construction market for uh, MENA-based contractors remains attractive. Uh, this is mainly due to relatively unique characteristics in these markets, one of them being the decent demographics, relatively young in consideration to other geographies, uh, the strong and continued growth of uh, budget surpluses, uh, the very much well-capitalized sovereign wealth funds, and obviously their drive to continue growing a lot of and diversifying, um, more importantly, a lot of these economies. Even with that continued growth, uh, our research team still believes that Dubai market will still face uh, weakness moving forward due to a lot of the debt issues and maturities that they're currently facing. Uh, however, this does not mean that there aren't ample opportunities and the global research team does believe that within the MENA region there are a few countries that remain positive uh, namely Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia and Qatar are one of them. For more details on this research report and similar research reports as well please uh, feel free to log on to our website at www.globalinv.net Thank you very much.